out here barbecuing the ingredient of the week, T-bone steak, my favourite. <laughs> I've got some coals, I've got outdoor oh sunshine, couldn't think of anything better. So Adrian's going to cook a nice big juicy T-bone on the barbecue in this great weather and I'm going to make a little appetizer to go with it, a little San Choy Bao, Janela style. Perfect. So I think we're both pretty peckish today. Well, let's get cooking. I'll go first. San Choy Bao is usually full of preservatives and whenever I eat it, excuse me, I used to come home from Asian restaurants and feel sick. And it was a shame because I love it. Okay, so a little bit of sunflower oil or safflower oil to start. Then I'm going to put the white parts of my spring onions. This is quick because it's like a stir fry. And then I've got some grated ginger and some chopped garlic. Do you want me to do something for you here? Chop oh, some coriander? Some coriander root. So yeah. I want Adrian to give me, I've washed them, the, st the stems, and I'd leave the leaves for later. Okay. Tofu. I've cubed it up, so I want that to be crunchy yeah, and you. nice. Now you want me to have the lettuce cups ready for you, so we take them straight out? Yeah, I was just going to ask you that. Ah, I was ready so for that So we're going to make cups out of, so we can hold it. So a little bit of corn with some veggies in here, some colour, so a bit of capsicum, red caps. So really all it is, is a little stir fry that's been cut up really finely. Nearly there. And you want it quite crunchy like a stir fry. It looks like lettuce carnage over here, doesn't oh, it? What are you doing? Oh, no, just chopping them up. See how I get nice little cups? I chop around like that and you get a beautiful little cup. That's, that's the, perfect. The I want about four of those. Okay, ABC, beautiful. so sweet soy, ketchup manis. You can get that in supermarkets now, Asian groceries. That's going to give it that yummy caramelised flavour. Now, if Fish you make sauce. a meat version, you could do it with pork or yeah. chicken or yeah. any leftover sort of meat. Just yep. chop it up. Absolutely. Well, I think traditionally it is with pork. That's what they use. Pork and I want some tamari, Prawn, which is wheat-free soy. Yeah. See how that's going nice and dark? Okay. Finish it off with some bean sprouts, freshen it up, and a few of the green parts of the spring onions, like that. And let's just chop that up for you. There we go. There we go, beautiful. Got to do something. No. Here we go. <laughs> in we go. And let's put them in the cups. Oh, nice. Now this is something you want to have a tea towel on. Oh, look at that, that's fantastic. Oh, wait Can for I me, wait now? for me, wait for me. No, wait. That's just <laughs> enough for four. I want to eat it then. Okay. Look at that. Lots of nice herbs in there, lots of vegetables, nice and crunchy. Beautiful little starter to a barbie, especially in one that's filled with meat, because sometimes you don't want meat, meat, meat. Sometimes you want veggies and tofu. So we're going to finish these off. And, the tip um, is to probably have some napkins around if you're going to do this one. Well, Other no wind. Oh. Mm. We'll be back with Adrian's T-bone. Oh, this summer, enjoy the full flavour of char grilling with the Heat Beats brand Australia Day competition. Oh, look at that. Nice and hot, love the sizzle. The Heat Beats brand and Good Chef Bad Chef are giving you the chance to win a very stylish Heat Beats entertainer barbecue every day, right up to Australia Day. To enter, simply visit www.heatbeats.com.au and follow the links to the competition entry form. Good luck and happy barbecuing. Wait till you see what Adrian's got under the table. You Go know, <laughs> there's been thousands of years since caveman. Evolution have got us to this point here right now with you and I. Well, no progression, no evolution. And this piece of steak. <laughs> I reckon we're, we've got ourselves to the pinnacle. This is what it's all about. I'm going to show you how to cook a T-bone like this. Now, this is not something that I would eat on my own. I'd share it with someone or maybe some friends with some other meat. But what I'm going to do is, sh <laughs> what I'm going to do is show you how to cook this T-bone steak. Now, I've gone to my butcher and said, cut me a big, thick T-bone steak because I like cooking meat on the bone. That's where all the juice and the flavour is. And this T-bone steak comes from the, the saddle, we call this part here. It actually incorporates two cuts of meat, which is here, your strip loin or sirloin, or some people call it the porterhouse. And this part here, which is the tenderloin or eye fillet, the oh, most tender cut. That's but how cook, it works. Cooked on the bone, it is the most succulent, juicy piece. Tell now, me how many grams that is, Adrian. Oh, I reckon this one here, that's about 920 grams. So I tell people to have about 100 grams of meat in a sitting. 
three times a week. You probably want to turn three around. Three weeks work. You probably want to turn around when you see how much salt I put on this baby here, and I make sure I get salt on all that there. Now you might think at home that, geez, he's putting a lot of salt on that. You see, you'd be right. You're right, I am. But you see, there's a little bit of salt on the outside, or a lot of salt on the outside, but there's none on the inside. So this salt will eventually penetrate, and a lot of it will actually fall off. But I want to make sure that's well and truly seasoned before I cook it. And I'll put a nice amount of pepper. You want to make sure that when you're cooking meat, that you use the right amount of salt. Use less salt in your vegetables and other things, but your meat really needs a lot of salt on it. And then what I'll do with this is, once I've got the salt on it, I put it straight on the grill. I could, if I wanted to, and I will this time, put a little bit of oil. Now this barbecue is red hot, so I'll just put, just put a little bit of oil, probably even like a fraction of a teaspoon on there, just a little bit, and that helps to dissolve that salt. And you can see the salt going into it and into the meat where it belongs. Now what you do is bring it over to the barbecue, maybe with some tongs. <laughs> just, you might need two hands for this baby here. Pick it up like that. <gasps> He's actually now, serious. As I drop it on here, wait till you see this. You see that? Well, look, that's what the heat bees in there. That's beautiful. There's so much heat in there, it's great. And now, when you're cooking a steak like this, you actually want to cook with a high heat and start it off really high, and that's what seals in the juices, gives you that caramelised um, sort of flavour on the outside. And in this case, we'll get some lovely grill marks on the outside. Now, a steak like this, I reckon, is going to take about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how you like Each it cooked. Each side? We'll keep turning it. Oh, okay. I, I use what I call the, this is the, where the evolutions come in, the suckling pig method of cooking a steak. Ooh. Instead of putting it on one side, because it's such a thick yeah. cut, it'll just burn on the yeah. bottom. So I just turn it over and I keep turning it over and what happens is the juices are trying to fly up to the surface and come out. By turning it over, you make those juices have to travel the other way and come back up again and it locks in the juices There's where they belong. Now what I'll do, this. another tip is, see how it's flaring up a little bit? That's some of the fat or the, the oil coming off and getting onto the, 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 the heat beads briquettes yeah, here yeah. and flaring it up. So what I'll do is just turn that over like that and move it away from the flames. You don't want the flames to hit in here because that's that what already. makes it flake. Looks great. There's a lot of heat coming out of it and it's searing it in. And those bar marks there, those brown bits, are caramelised and sweet and that's what makes it taste good. Now what I'll do is I'll keep turning this and turning it over and you know it, all the fat on the outside is a little bit of fat on it. A lot of people are really funny about fat. They think oh it's got fat on it, it's really bad. And that's good. Well in this case it's going to render down and actually flavours the meat and helps to keep it moist. Everyone loves steak, so here's my tip. Ask your butcher to cut a thicker steak. Something on the bone, like a T-bone, is perfect. You've got to cook it for a little bit longer, but cook it the same way you'd normally cook a steak. Rest it and then carve it. You'll find meat cooked on the bone is so much sweeter and juicier, and of course you've got the bone to chew on afterwards. Now, I know we're going to have a big piece of steak, and I'm going to share this with a couple of people. You're not going to have any Janella, but what we're going to do is make a salad, a lovely vegetable salad to go along with this. Now I've got some green vegetables here. Beautiful. I knew you'd like this. So what I've got in here is some snow peas, some uh, beans, some uh, asparagus and some broccoli. So I put them, cut them to, the, to this size here, put them in a pot of boiling salted water for about a minute or so till they started to change colour and were nice and crisp still. Beautiful. Took them out into ice water which stops them from cooking and then we drained off the water so they're nice and blanched and still nice and crisp and you can sort of Still got that crispness, which is really important with green vegetables. So you'll love that. Perfect. Now my steak's been on for a couple of seconds. Perfect. I'm going to turn it over again. Look at this. Those beads are hot. Look at that. It's simmering away. You want to keep an eye on it. I could actually move this steak over to a cooler part of the barbecue and put the lid on. Because it's so hot. But I will do that in a couple of minutes, but I want to get some good, good grill marks. So that'd be it. like transferring it to an oven after you've sealed it. Exactly. Mm. And a lot of times if I'm cooking at home in, in, in the, or at the restaurant, we might seal it so we get that lovely caramelised look on the outside. And then I'll put it into the oven for, you know, 10 minutes or so. Mm. But then we get to the next bit is resting it. And we'll talk about that later on. Now the salad I'm going to make... It's quite complex is making a T-bone steak in business. Oh, it's, 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 it's a science. It's a science yeah. cooking a steak. It's not just a matter of putting it on and going to have a, have a beer or something like that. You've got to actually think about it. Now, can you chop up some parsley for me? Just give me some lovely parsley into there and I'll get a nice clove of garlic, which I'll smash. This is for the dressing. And I'm going to make, you know, lots of garlic and lots of lots, lots of big flavours with a steak like this. Like that, Adrian? That's it, throw it in. It's a little bit windy here, isn't it? Yeah. Which is good if you've got garlic leaves that sort of just blow away. Yeah. You don't have to clean them up later on. Whoops. Now, I'll rough chop this because I wanted this to be uh, nice and tasty. What about the actually, tomatoes? Tomatoes, just cu cut half? them in half and throw them into here for me. There we go. Ah, okay. Chop that up like that. Beautiful. It's good you've got all these greens going on, Adrian. It'll help process the fat from that big brontosaurus. All steak. those tasty bits of fat. And I'll grab this here and some sherry vinegar as well. Now I'll just turn this steak over before it flares up. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, look at that baby. And some olive oil. 
pour that into there. So seriously, onto healthy shoes, if you had a 900 gram steak, how many people would you share it with? For me, if I was going to share that, it would be two or three people. So you know, four people all together? Three, two or three people for myself. But, you know, for some ladies, I would share it with maybe four people, maybe six. Red meat's an important part of the diet, but all the time and eating large amounts of it is a bad thing. And I've learned that from you, Janella. He doesn't quite you know, believe it's a it yet, but he's getting there. Turn that over, move that to the back of the back of the, the, the oven there, and I'll pop the lid on and we'll keep an eye on it. Every couple of minutes, I'll open it up and turn it around. Now, yeah, the right. dressing. We've got that going. On Where's my whisk? Here. Here we go, throw me the whisk. Oh, the chilli. Beautiful. Mix that around. And what we'll do is have a taste of that. That tastes fantastic. Big flavours, just like me and just like my steak. Lots of acid in there. Yeah. Lots of parsley, some garlic and some olive oil. We'll put that aside there. We'll keep the sun off it. Yeah. But my steak's going to take about 10 to 12 minutes to cook. And I'll turn it a couple of times during, during that time to make sure it's nice and Lovingly, even. Lovingly, no doubt. Exactly. And the most important thing is when I take it off, I'm going to rest it. I'm going to rest it for about 10 minutes. And that'll allow all the juices to relax inside the steak. Are you so going to be able to wait that long? I'll try It'll, it'll be a struggle, believe me, but I'll let it rest and then we'll be able to carve it up and enjoy a beautifully cooked steak. So what do you do with the dirt on your mushrooms? Well, you need to get it off. Get a paper towel, dip it in some water, find the dirty bits and wipe them off. Don't wash them. It's going to make your whole dish soggy. So get most of the dirt off, if not all of it, then you're good to go. There you go, my T-bone steak, fit for a king, has been resting for about 10 minutes. It's nice and crusty on the outside, just the way we like it. Now what I'll do is, there's my bone there, and I'm gonna cut with my knife down that bone and along and around this side. And I'll just put it like that, and I'll just cut straight down there, and off it comes. Look at that, nice and Perfect, rare on the inside. It? And no flies. They, they, they know, they're Australian flies. They know when there's good meat around. And I've got the bone. The beauty of the bone is at the end of the meal, you've got something to pick up and chew on. Now what, this is the way I present it. So I pop the bone sexy. there like that. And then what I do is I carve it with my knife. I just sort of make a few incisions like this and just turn it over like that. Perfectly and cooked, Adrian. Look at, that, look at that, beautiful. Nice and medium rare, just the way I like it. And with this baby here, I'm gonna cut it into big pieces. Now you can see, if you're serving a couple of piece, people, by carving it like this, everyone gets a nice yeah. big sort of piece. And you can Lovely. pick out what you want. That's there exactly right. So you can just have that little bit or one beautiful. or two bits. Look at that, and by folding it over like that. Yeah, I like this, Adrian. This is much it, better. You know, it makes it look nice. It's not like a big barbarian steak, you know, all well, sort of. It is. Yeah, well, it is a big barbarian steak. But you know, when it's served like that, yeah. it's enough for a couple of people. Now I'll put some dressing on here for you and just shine that up for you because I knew you needed something to eat. I reckon we should get into this pretty quickly. You taste your salad, tell me what you think, nice simple dressing, and I'll of course, I'm gonna have a slab of meat, there's no doubt, from the fillet, nice and tender, you know, nice flavour to it. Lovely dressing, Adrian. You know what? That's really yummy. Mm. And I can smell that that's really beautiful. That is beautiful. Look, really nice. he's just the happiest man in the world. It's cooked beautifully, I'm really happy you did this. Because you can just have as much as you want. Just don't eat 900 grams yourself. I mean, really. Yeah, you know, this once a week, once a week or once a fortnight, something like this, shared yeah. with some friends. It's, it's a beautiful perfect. piece of wheat. You know, lots of veggies to go with it. You know, and we'll make a fatouche shell to go with it as well. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, we had the Sancho bao of yours, the vegetarian. So a little piece of meat, although I'll eat more than you think. <laughs> and I think this will be delicious. What a great meal. <laughs> nice work, Adrian. T-bone steak done Richo style.